Hey guys, I'm Nick, and in today's tutorial we will be creating this swirly worm swirl lines, filling in the shape of the human head uh, abstract effect, I don't know. It looks pretty cool in my opinion, so let's check it out how to create it. But first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who is purchasing my project files. Also for this project, all the files are in the first link in the description. Huge thanks to everyone who are watching my videos, are subscribed. And if you also are finding something useful in my tutorials and want to support me, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, let me know in the comments what else you would like to see in this channel, and of course check out my Gumroad. I will be very, very grateful if you do that. So, let's set up our collision geometry. Here, you can see that I'm using Dust 3D human model, like your basic, basic model. I just, uh, I think I added little spheres here and also cut out his, like, inner mouth part. Also, I cut out his rest of his body because we don't need that. So you can do that in any software you want. I just in Cinema 4D just sliced out part of his body. But uh, yeah, we import the Alembic, then we add a convert node and convert node converts the Alembic into the mesh, into the polygon right here. I just wanted to subdivide it and then I added a mesh size. And mesh size is a really cool node. It moves the geometry to kind of like 0, 0, 0. Then you can scale it down or scale it up. Really cool node. And then I also added a grid and then I merged them and we see that we have kind of like closed geometry. Then I dropped a group node and this is really important. It is obviously a good practice to correctly name your groups, but here we have just this one group. so. Yeah. And then, from this group, I have two outputs. So one is our out collider, which is basically just this wall geometry. And then we will be using volume collisions, not surface collisions. Right now we just need to drop another VDB from polygons. Voxel size here is set to 0 0.05. And then we drop out another null and name it out VDB collider. So we have these two nulls here. And then we have our ROP Alembic export node here just to export this Alembic file. That's all about the collider and let's get to the simulation. So quick disclaimer, I found it pretty long time ago about like emitting particles that are then built to wires and my project in the base it features that same algorithm. I will add a link in the description in case you want to check out that initial like core algorithm. But here I have a circle, which is just, yeah, just a regular circle, right? It's primitive type set to polygon, orientation set to the X plane, and third center is set to be around the neck of the collider. So let me visualize our collider and we can see that it's centered to be here. Division set to 12 and rotation here dollar sign F means that every frame it just rotates a little bit. And then I added a mountain node. And in the mountain node, you can play with these height and element size values. In this, in this example, it's uh, set height to be 2 and element size 0.8. And the time, if you insert dollar time, uh, like, and the time parameter here, if you type dollar t, you can see that it kind of wiggles deforms through through the time right and then we need to scatter some points we can use scatter node and force total count to 100 you can play with this parameter but here it is 100 and it's just a little bit of wax code don't be scared don't close this video i will explain every single part of it so v what is v V stands for velocity and velocity is an impulse, let's say it's a little bit of a punch we give to every particle at their birth time. So it's not a continuous force, it's just a little punch, just a little impulse from the start. And V and velocity, yeah, it's a 
vector value so we can break it down to x y and z on the x axis we don't need any sort of impulse because we don't want these particles to go to the shoulders we want them to go straight up for the y it's just three i figured out it works so initial impulse will be like up and the z axis is a little bit complicated here but i will make sure to get it clear to you so we will need to get some sort of random number in this case it should be a random number between minus two and two because i want some of these particles to go like more of like here and some of these particles go more of like here right so the function fit takes the value in one range and shifts it to the corresponding value in a new range sounds pretty good to us so let's take a function called rand creates a random number between 0 and 1 from a seed it could be any number but we want it to be different for each particle so let's use our per particle number ptnum then we know that random outputs from 0 to 1 so let's say 0 1 these are our initial output values and right now we will need to add values that we want our initial values to be remapped to to be shifted to if you want so minus two and two close the brackets and it is so fit this number generated by random and it is somewhere between zero and one two minus two and two that's all what this step does also we will need to add an attribute and uh, you can name it like point id in this case pt id and it's equal to pt num we will need to kind of like store the pt num and also we will need to add a p scale in this case it influences the speed of the animation but also it influences how detailed your lines will be and in my example it's 0 0.06 you can also play with all these values and get interesting results and now we will need to add a pop network so here the majority of the things will be generated when you just add a pop net so here in source first input we will need to set our emission type to all points geometry source will be set to use first contact geometry burst type attributes everything else i think it's the default pop wind adds a bit of organic low to our particles so wind velocity is set to 0.3 on the z-axis air resistance to 0.1 amplitude to 0.3 no sorry 3 turbulence set to 7 that's all basically yeah it's up to you how to set up the pop wind and pop grains now this is interesting we will need to add this pop grains node and you can play with this too but i will just say you which values are working for me so constraint iteration set to 10 behavior tab friction with collider set to 0.1 with particles set to 0.5 static threshold set to 0.1 and scale kinetics set to 0.01 internal collisions weight 1 stiffness 10 enable mass shock scale set to be global and shock scaling power set to 4 Clumping, weight 0, stiffness 1. Explicit constraints, stiffness said to be 1000, 100,000, and weight set to 1. And target pins, weight set to 1, and stiffness to 10. In the solver, we will uncheck use OpenCL. And then we will need to add a subsolver. Subsolver default operation should be set always. And let's dive into it and check what we got here. We will just need to add an add node and wire it to the top geometry. And here in the add node, we will switch to polygons tab, switch to by group tab. And here in the add parameter, we need to set it to be by attribute. And attribute name should be ptid, that integer that stores the point number. And then we just add the convert line. Then we go back to our popnet. We add a little bit of drag here after the sub solver, like air resistance set to 0.1. Then we wire that into pop solver. Now we will need to add our static object. 
And here, let me show you. You drop a static object node, and here you have your sub path. In sub path, you just select your out collider, not VDB collider that we created, but just regular out collider. And here we check use deforming geometry, use object transform, create active object. And by default, the display geometry will be checked, but we don't need that. You can uncheck that. We here in the collision detection, in the collisions RBD solver collision detection, use volume collisions. And here mode set to volume sample, division method set to by size. We also need to check invert sign and we also need the proxy volume. And this is very important. This proxy volume, you can hit this little button and check this out VDB collider. Click on that and it will appear here and you can check this collision guide and you will see that we have our VDB collision mesh here. And in the physical tab next to collisions, I set the bounds to be zero, friction to be 0.1 and dynamic friction scale to also be 0.1. I don't want any like friction inside there. And then we drop a merge node and in merge node we need to set the effector relationship to be mutual. For the gravity, I actually I'm using minus 0.8, so very, very little gravity. So before I show you the result, remember that group one in the collider we added. So let me show you why we added it. So after popnet, add a delete node. And in the delete node, you just need to reference this group one and operation set to be delete selected. And this deletes any sort of geometry, right? Because here you can see we have it the popnet exported that geometry too. So we named this delete node. So let me play the simulation and show you what we got. It looks pretty cool. It will fill all the head, all the shape with time. But right now, just to save time, I'll walk you through these three nodes and the final export for rendering. So subdivide, pretty self-explaining subdivides, make these curves smoother. Resample makes even denser poly count to super smooth result. And polypath, super important node because in Octane, hair don't render properly without this polypath node. And here I just checked connect endpoints. Then I added ROP Alembic node and set the frame range to be 0 to 380 and exported my worms. Now let's open up Cinema 4D or you can open any 3D software you want. Or also, if you have Octane installed for Houdini, you can follow it and recreate it there. I just don't like how Houdini handles materials and, and I think that composition or rendering workflow is not the easiest one. So yep, let's switch to Cinema 4D. So here we are in Cinema 4D, we have imported both our human head from collider geometry and our worms. And first of all, let me show you a cool trick that I really loved here. Uh, so I get my geometry and I added it into the bool and also I added a cube. And basically what I've done, I sliced exactly the half of this body here. And I thought it's it's pretty cool looking effect. Here you can see the wires and all that stuff. So that's about the skull, also about the sphere. So remember, we got that bad topology here in the eyes, just so the wires are not going through the eye. I have deleted these polygons, just simply double click select them and deleted and added this little sphere. It's pitch black with this temp diffuse, no gloss on this material. And so we just don't see any sort of background. So yeah, and our worms. Uh, when you add this, uh, this lambic, it will add it as a spline, and then you need to drop an octane object tag. And here you can select hair, check the render as hair, and play with this root and tip thickness. And then you can apply a material, in this case just white material. And for the lighting, I'm using uh, HDRI, this Photo Studio 
some sort of HDRI from HDRI Heaven. And uh, the background is just gray background, portrait camera, focal length set to 80. Played a bit with the uh, camera imager as usual. And yeah, that's it. And that's how our worms or spaghetti <laughs> is growing. Alright guys, that's all for today. I really hope that you learned something new and enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you want to see more of these kind of tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave me a like, let me know in the comments what I should do next, and don't forget to check the link in the description for complete project files available for very low price. I'll be back very soon. Bye!